Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave Keith. This is a bonus biker lifestyle. My word you're being spoilt this week. Two videos. <laughs> Maybe something to do with the fact that I'm finding I've got a bit of time on my hands. I can't think why. Something to do with uh, lockdown or another. I thought I'd use it as an opportunity to show you some sourcing tips that you may or may not already be using but how they can work together to get some results for you. Now today we're going to be looking at Bidkit and Jixon. They're two tools you can use for different reasons but they can also be used together for really good results. So I'm going to take you to my computer screen and show you what they're all about. Okie dokie then, first off we're going to be looking at Bidkit. Now Bidkit is a collection of tools that can be used for e specifically for eBay. I've had some really really good wins on this in the past. I'll show you uh, how to, to go about having a look for that. Um, this is available on desktop at bidkit.com or on the App Store. I'm on iOS, so my app looks like this. There'll be an Android version available, no doubt, from your favourite app provider. They look much of a muchness. Uh, this is the desktop, obviously, we're looking at on my computer at the moment. And we're going to be concentrating on two sections, but I'll just go through all of them just briefly. Uh, local deals, um, deals in your area for collection only. Spelling mistakes, I in historically I've used a site called Fat Fingers that you may be familiar with. Uh, this is, it does exactly the same thing. Uh, the gift finder, daily deals, unwanted gifts, unwanted prizes, outlet deals, like new, new buy it nows, nighttime auctions, penny auctions, zero bids and expensive items. But what we're going to be concentrating on today is the first two sections of this site. So like I say, local deals is collection only deals in your area. The reason this is a really useful tool to have is because a lot of times people who are inexperienced at selling on, on eBay will only sell their items locally. Perhaps the item might be oversized, they may be afraid of uh, arranging postage. For whatever reason, they select on their list in collection only. Now you can probably imagine that restricts the audience quite a lot. Even in larger towns and cities that narrows down the attractiveness of that listing to people that might be looking at it. So clicking on local deals brings up a search facility. Obviously I'm going to be looking at my own postcode area PR72NG and you can set the maximum distance to whatever you like. It, uh, it goes from five miles up to up to 50 miles. But uh, I'll keep it at five miles for argument's sake. Minimum price and maximum price, not really ap applicable because a lot of auctions, as you all know, will start very, very low and some people get carried away with how much they, they price them. So the minimum ma maximum price is almost under relevance, but obviously that's uh, your own personal choice there. Category, again, we want to be searching all categories because we're using this tool to source. Uh, you can split it down by uh, categories for more specific search results if you're after specific items. Always use sort by ended soonest. That's definitely the way to be looking at stuff because obviously if you've, you're looking at items that have very few, very short period of time left on them and no bids or very little bids, then there's an increased chance of a win there. Now the most important area of this search facility is the keywords. Now again, I'm probably stating the obvious to anybody who's ever used eBay at all. Uh, keywords are a descriptive of the items that you're looking for. You can actually search for items generally as well. I like the search terms job lot or bundle, and that'll bring up items of uh, bulk items and box set wholesale deals as well. So for this example, we're gonna use the keywords job lot and hit search. Obviously, it's going to bring up all listings within a five mile radius of my postcode with that search term in. Now, it is fair to say in these search results, you're going to be turning up a lot of stuff that's it's junk, to be fair, or it's certainly not something that you would entertain selling yourself. Uh, in this instance, going through the list, nothing that's really leaping out at me. Now, here's a, here's a potential item already. Uh, I've sold 
track pieces in the past in bundles and had some really good success. It was a bit of a pain in the backside to sort them out, but um, there's money to be had in there. So this is a, a bundle of 160 pieces of miscellaneous 00 gauge track from several marks. Now, if you know anything about uh, tracks, obviously the likes of Hornby and Lima brands sell really well, but it's certainly worth uh, further investigation. So we're gonna click view on eBay. I'll take us to the eBay listing and we can do further investigation. Now going off the item description on this, this one, the track is suitable for restoration, maybe spares. Uh, some fish plates and sleepers are missing. They must, have be, they must have been stored for a long period of time in damp conditions. It's raising up too many alarm bells for me, so I'm gonna go back to bid kit and continue my search. There are some items that I wouldn't necessarily look at from the get-go. Results in this category that's mentioned car boot items already flag up alarm bells for me because my way of looking at it is if somebody's trying to knock out a load of car boot stuff that they've tried to sell it at a car boot and been unsuccessful, there's a reason they're unsuccessful. But just for example purposes, I've come across a listing here for a DVD, 40 lots of DVDs, uh, some new. So we'll look at this, for, like I say, for example purposes, because I know a lot of you guys out there that sell media. So we'll view the item on eBay. Obviously do your due diligence on the listing, make sure that you're looking through and researching as much as you possibly can. Now assuming it ticks all the right boxes and it's something that you want to be interested in, don't bid on it. The reason I say that is this is where Jigson comes into play. What you need to be doing is copying the eBay item number. So once we've got our eBay item number, we're gonna head over to Jigson.com. I've already logged into my account, but so when you go to Jigson.com, you'll see a sign up process. Uh, it's a free to use service, uh, but if you pay $6 a year, I believe it is, you get rid of the adverts and the preload to when you're actually logging into the site. Uh, it's worth it just to support this site, if nothing else, to be fair. Once you've logged in, this is the screen you'll be seeing. Now you notice already I've actually got an item that's ended. In that instance, I didn't win it. So let's get rid of that. Now doing this whole process is a numbers game. The idea is the more items that you put on your list, the more items you're gonna win. It sounds like an obvious thing to say, but you're not the only person who's going to be doing this. <laughs> And there's probably going to be a few more people doing this after this video goes out, to be fair. <laughs> so using the eBay item number that you've just copied, you're going to paste it into the eBay item number. Put your maximum bid in. For example purposes, you're going to put £11 in, just a pound over. I'm not in, really interested in winning this auction myself personally, but like I say, just to show, to show you through. The next field is groups. You can actually sort them by different groups. If you are if you want to separate the items you're looking at into say electricals, into toys, so on and so forth, so you can group them. I don't usually do that because of the, the number I like to see the full list. Now, the offset and the mirror, it's the standard is six. Uh, there's no real need to, to change that. It doesn't increase your chances of a win if you alter those figures at all. And then click add. And once that's added to your list, all the item specifics there, you can link to the item itself uh, just to follow it if you need to go back to the list and have a look. How much time's left on the auction? Your bid, the current bid, and the pertinent information in the box above the item listing. So obviously you can keep track of what it is. Another reason Jixon is an excellent idea is because as part of the setup process, you give them your email address and they will email you to tell you if you've been successful or unsuccessful. So once that item's on your list, you can go back to bid kit, find other items that you might be interested in to add to your list and add them to. Now, like I say, you, there's a lot of these auctions, if you're strict with yourself, uh, uh, as far as your bidding's concerned, that you're not going to win. So it really is a numbers game. The more items that are on your list, the more of an increased chance you've got of getting a win. So back to the big kit screen and continue looking for items that you can add to your Jixon list. And then you can just simply figure about your list or add to it as you, to your heart's content. And you can actually be very inventive and creative with your search, search terms. Like I say, with your keywords, should I say. Like I say, bundle is another good keyword that I like to use for wholesale and job lots and the like. But like I say, you might be looking for something a little bit more specific and you can really drill down those results. Uh, equally, if you increase the, the distance, if you're prepared to travel a bit further for your collection deals, then obviously increasing your distance will increase the search results as well. Okay, so that covers the collection only local deals. Uh, what we're gonna do now is move on to the spelling mistakes. 
Now again, both Bidkit and Jixin can be used side by side as far as this is concerned as well. Uh, you may already be aware of, like I say, the likes of fatfingers.com, which I've used historically with, with some success, but there are an inordinate number of spelling mistakes on eBay. People that list on eBay come from a wide variety of backgrounds and not all of them will have um, great grammar. That's that's really the long and short of it. It's uh, I'm not being cruel by saying that, it's just the way it is. So the search facility on this looks very slightly different from the local deals. Uh, what we're concentrating on are the keywords. So one of my favorite consoles is a Nintendo. So I'm going to use that as an example. Nintendo, spelled correctly. Again, for, for this example, I possibly would select a minimum price because I want to rule out all the lower cheap and cheerful accessories. But again, for this demonstration, I won't do. Again, maximum price is almost no relevance for me because I want to see as many listings as possible. A category, if you want to restrict your results to the games and consoles categories, then obviously select those there. And I always sort by ending soonest. Uh, again, for the same reasons as local deals, because I'm very, very interested to see the ones who, the, the listings that have minimal time left and minimal bids. So after spelling Nintendo correctly, these are the listings that are spelled incorrectly. And again, you can scroll through this will search all of eBay for these spelling mistakes as well, rather than just a local area, because we don't want to limit ourselves just to the local area. A lot of these search results will uh, have postage options as well. These aren't only collection only listings. So just scrolling down, seeing if any, we can find anything exciting. Nintendo, Nintio, Nintino. Lots and lots of games, obviously. This is a great way of adding to your own personal collections as well. Okay, so here, this is an absolutely perfect example and I, I'm choosing this because it's an item that I want for myself. So I'm hoping no, none of you guys gives on me on this and I do win it. So this is a, according to the spelling, a Nintendo 64 uh, Conslo in a box with games and remote. Now because of the extent of those spelling mistakes and the fact it's only got one bid, this is going to be very, very juicy. There's only two two days left on this. I know how much uh, these go for. So I'm quite happy to stick a cheeky bid in. So I'm going to go again, go to view on eBay. Just check everything's in order. Looks in good condition. Obviously, again, do your due diligence as far as the listings are concerned, the listings concerned. So check out the images, check out the item description. Quite happy with that. Once you're happy with the listing, again, click the eBay item number over to Jixon and add it to your list. Now these bids are, are not accessible to anybody else apart from yourself. So nobody knows how much your bid until six seconds before the end of the auction when your bid gets submitted and hopefully that's the winning bid. So I'm gonna put a bid of 55 in for those. If I don't win, I don't win and then add it to. And that's on my list. Now I'm stating the obvious, obviously that my maximum bid on that was 55. That doesn't mean to say that that is the price that is going to be submitted and I'll have to pay. It's just my my top goalie and it operates. It's as though Jixon is operating as yourself as the final bidder on an item. Now that bit really was teaching you guys to suck eggs. <laughs> Okay, and back to Bidkit. Now, I'm only going to use those two examples uh, for Jixon in this in this case, just so you've got an overview. Um, in every single case, it'll be exactly the same. You're adding items uh, by the eBay item number and adding your ma maximum bid. So that's the spelling mistakes covered. Obviously, you can get creative as far as keywords are concerned. You might be more proficient in one way, one area than another, so you can be looking for those the keywords that suit the nature of your business. And like I say, as far as the other options on Bidcare are concerned, I've never really found much use for them. But if you guys have, give me some feedback in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And equally, if you've got time to have a play and you discover something that I need to be including in my videos, then again, I'd love to hear from you. Now, this isn't gonna replace any of your other sourcing techniques, of course. This is just another string to your bow, another 
a relatively small area where you can score some extra stock for yourselves. Maybe if you're a bit bored of an evening and you're not interested in whatever your partner has got on the TV, you can get on your phone or on your laptop and have a look and set some snipes going. That five or 10 minutes of effort may well just land you some really juicy stock. Now, if you find videos like this useful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. It helps me to help more resellers. And that's why I'm doing this at the end of the day. Likewise, if you aren't already subscribed, please click the subscribe button. If you click the notification bell as well, that'll give you a notification of next time I put a video up. Thanks very much indeed for watching, guys. I know it's a bit of a shorter one today. I uh, hope this has helped. I've been Dave Keith, and I will see you in the next video. Adios.